So let's do an example. Let's calculate the energy of activation from only two rate constants and two temperatures. That means we're going to want this form of the equation. For 132 purposes, this is the most useful form of the Arrhenius equation. So here's a reaction that isn't particularly important for anything in real life, but does have some nice chemical kinetics. The activation energy for this reaction, where two HIs become H2 and I2, is 186 kilojoules per mole. Let's find the rate constant at 372 degrees C. So uh, we said that in order to find the, uh, the rate constant at a different temperature, we'll use this form that has two rate constants and activation energy over R and two temperatures. All right, so what are we trying to find? We're trying to find K. And for algebra reasons, we're going to choose to make this K1. It doesn't really matter which one is K1 and T1 or which one is K2 and T2, as long as you're consistent. So we're going to say that uh, 282 is number 2 and 372 is number 1. OK, and so now we're going to start filling things in. Um, so ln of we're looking for K1 divided by K2 is 3.52 times 10 to the minus 7th per molar per second, because it turns out this is a second order reaction, but that doesn't really matter for us. And we're going to go with negative, the activation energy we said is 186 kilojoules per mole, divided by R, 8.314 joules per mole times Kelvin. Now wait a second, we need to stop. So we have kilojoules on the top and joules on the bottom. So we need to figure out, we need to make those units match. Uh, so let's convert, my, my preference is usually to convert the kilojoules to joules. You can do it the other way. Um, so 186 kilojoules per mole. And we remember that the conversion factor is that there are 10 to the third joules for every kilojoule because the K means 10 to the third. Uh, so that'll mean that our activation energy is 186 times 10 to the third joules per mole. So we'll come back and we'll fix that over here in our Arrhenius equation. 186 times 10 to the third joules per mole. All right, and now we're going to have our temperature. So we need 1 over our temperature. Now our temperatures need to be in Kelvin. So we need to add 273 to each of our temperatures in order to get their Kelvin versions. And we find that 282 becomes 555 Kelvin, and that 372 is 645 Kelvin. OK, and we see that temperature 1 goes first, which we said is 645 Kelvin, minus 1 over 555 Kelvin. OK, so if we do all the arithmetic on the right side of this equation, we get 5.625. And on the left side, we still have natural log of K1 divided by 3.52 times 10 to the minus 7 per molar per second. OK, to get rid of the LNs, we're going to do E to the both sides. And so that will give us K1 divided by 3.52 times 10 to the minus 7 and e to the 5.625, if you put that in your calculator, is 2.77. Okay, we're going to keep some extra significant figures there until we get to the end. All right, so now in order to get k by itself, we just need to multiply both sides by 3.52 times 10 to the minus 7, and I get uh, k, that k1 equals 9.756 times 10 to the minus 5. And that'll have the same units as the other rate constant per molar per second. Alrighty, so if we look at this rate constant, we see that 9.756, that's probably too many significant figures. Let's, let's round that off to about to 3. So let's call that 9.76. Okay, so that number is bigger than the rate constant at 282 Celsius. And that makes sense. Our rate constant is bigger because our reaction is faster at a higher temperature than it was at a lower temperature. We can also see that the value of the rate constant is different for every temperature. So the rate constant is constant at constant concentration, but changes for different temperatures.